What's going on YouTube Nightmare and I'm back here with another banger video and as you guys see by today's title and thumbnail I'm going to be answering you guys clothing brand questions you guys have for me feel me my last video did really well you know what I'm saying I think it's titled 19 minutes of free clothing brand game and it's basically like the same concept in this video I went ahead and asked in my Instagram a bunch of questions as you guys can see I got a bunch of ton of questions for you guys here today I'm basically just gonna be answering it for for everyone here so if you guys want to be featured in one of these videos if you guys have like specific questions you guys want to ask me on instagram instagram is the way to you know what i'm saying do all of that feel me go follow my instagram it's gonna be like right here or like y'all gonna see like a little notification right here but go follow my instagram if you guys literally have any questions for me i posted on my ig a bunch of you guys responded so literally that's all i'm gonna do but in today's video i have a bunch of questions here and i wrote down some notes for me some key points i wanted to get into in this video so if you guys are new make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe we are closing in on 19,000 subscribers so i think we about to hit 18.9k so everybody know what i'm saying hit that like button hit that subscribe 19k soon and i ain't gonna lie let's get straight into this video i don't want to do too much talking because i ain't gonna lie we got a, we got a lot of sauce in here so back to these sauce videos let me know what you guys want to see next in, in the comments down below and let's get straight into this I bet so for the first question we is coming strong out the gate is how do i not get my money snatched from shopify on a pre-order method and basically i'm just gonna give you a whole rundown if you guys don't know what i'm talking about if anybody does it's like a whole thing with shopify is if you get over one percent chargeback rate i think in the last like 90 days you guys you guys will get put on a, a temporary hold it depends on like how much your chargeback rate is but basically a lot of people are charging back and basically you're not getting people a lot of people shop is over the one percent hold so their funds are gonna get held are gonna get put on a reserve once again if it's over the one percent your funds will get put on a reserve for at least 90 days 120 days it really depends on like how much your chargeback rate is percent so there's really no like way to definitely like not um get chargeback rates like there's no specific way to um not get put on a hold on other than just not getting chargebacks and if you guys don't want to use shopify payments once again this is with shopify payments only so if you guys want to go ahead and switch to another payment provider too that's also as well but there's no specific way to get it not on hold bro the one thing that that literally is the key to everybody getting their funds on hold is chargeback rates being over one percent so what that means is if you get a hundred orders if you get at least two chargebacks or three chargebacks you will get your funds on reserve as soon as you get the chargeback rate of over one percent they're like reviewing your account immediately bro and that's what happened with me but literally the key thing is to not get no chargebacks and if you're getting chargebacks make sure you're getting at least a hundred orders for every one chargeback that's literally the aspect ratio to it since it is one percent so literally cut down on chargebacks you know what i'm saying you want to make sure you guys are communicating with your customers because at the end of the day your customers are the only one that could charge back so you guys always want to make sure what thing that i helped me that to die down on chargebacks is make sure you guys shipping policy is really clear and also because your customers might not know if it's let's say if you do two to three weeks shipping they might think it's next day so then that will cause them to charge back and i'm not gonna lie shopify doesn't care if you either win a charge back or not so you just want to stop it from getting them charging back at all so make sure you guys show that your shipping policies are there give your customers frequent don't feel like don't make don't make them feel like they're getting scammed because if you're not responding to the emails then they're literally gonna charge back and that will mess up your business at the end of the day because shopify payments will put you on hold so you guys don't want to do that they've had the most money they've had for me they like what they would do is they'll put at least 10 percent of your payouts into this reserve funds and literally over time it goes it just goes up and then you're just watching your money sit there in a reserved funds and you can't touch it at all so you guys do not want to get on that i'm i promise y'all bro it's the worst thing bro I pro i've had over probably like my most my highest was probably like i think eighteen thousand in a reserve funds and it's literally just eighteen thousand dollars just sitting there that's built up over like three months that you can't touch because once again you can either get 10 percent of your pay payouts hold 15 percent of your payouts hold or i, I think 20 percent of your payouts hold so bro it's literally a hold for like three months bro tell you i got don't want it and sometimes even after the hold they still continue to do it so you're just on this ongoing thing with shopify that's what happened with me right now currently but i'm over i'm working on switching to a whole different payment provider so if you guys don't the the only way to not really get the chargeback rates is cutting down on your chargebacks and that literally would just you know what i'm saying keep updating your customers and make sure that all your policies are known before ordering because Feel me, you don't want these customers to charge back because if they charge back, you're going to get cooked. 
in that feel me so hope that answered your question feel me that's a good question starting out the gate i ain't gonna lie that's a great one all right so for the next question we got pre-made or pre-order for starting brands and i'm not gonna lie it's definitely pros and cons to both like with pre-made is definitely i would definitely tell you guys do pre-made if you guys have the capital if you guys have the capital i suggest everybody start off doing pre-made because doing pre-made literally puts you on top of so many other brands because think about this if you're starting brand and you're coming out of the gate pre-made a lot of people are probably going to be more towards to buy your brand over a brand that's pre-order because pre-order takes so long to ship the shipping times for pre-order is so slow so that's why a lot of people like to do pre-made because a lot of people bro people's brains is because they want their stuff next day like we amazon all that so you just by you having a pre-made inventory just by you having yourself in stock puts you already above so many other clothing brands just because people will literally buy something just because they will get it faster feel me i would like to tell i will tell you guys if you guys have the capital always do pre-made pre-made plus pre-order that's what i like to do is i like to at least have like a hundred on stock and then like if people if people want it then i'll do the pre-order if it gets like that much orders but literally pre-order is if, if you guys don't know what pre-order is it's basically like you getting you're opening a website you're getting the money from your customers after you drop right and you're using that money after you drop and then you're buying your inventory you're buying your bulk after like a week or so so let's say i will keep my website open for a week say the pre-orders and then let's say after at least like seven days i close my website send my manufacturer the money boom they start making it and then within probably like 30 days you get the bulk back and you ship it out to your customers after that blah, blah, blah. You guys heard that 30 days bro the manufacturer is gonna at least take two to three weeks you know what i'm saying four weeks on your hoodie and that's like a whole process you're you having this one drop that's literally taking at least like 30 days so but that's the thing with pre-order it's no upfront cost so if you guys don't have the money and don't have nothing at all you don't need you don't need money at all to do pre-order until you drop so let's say you hit 50 the 50 moq that you guys have from your manufacturer you at least have to have get at least 50 orders and then you use that money from that 50 orders and you buy your boat but you guys know it is slower people will not some people are not willing to wait you know what i'm saying 30 days or like two months or a month or like two to three weeks on a brand new clothing brand that they do not have so that's why i suggest you guys if you guys are just starting if you guys have the capital definitely do pre-made because that already puts you ahead of so many other brands so hopefully that helps y'all and you know what i'm saying pre-made or pre-order if you have capital definitely do it because you know what i'm saying everybody always want that in stock and once again what i like to do is with my drops i like to do pre-made plus pre-order so i like to at least have 50 to 100 pieces on hand so let's say i would do this drop boom have the one hour early access so everybody you know what i'm saying could get that i'll drop 50 okay these 50 is sold out once the 50 are sold out then i will start to do pre-order and then once again i would like i literally close my pre-order days like two to three days and i don't really, like wait a lot because once again you guys want to get these out to your customers really fast make sure when you're doing pre-order is like the fastest pre-order you you could do bro so literally if you guys want pre-made or pre-order if you have capital definitely do pre-made if you don't then stay with the pre-order if you don't you know what i'm saying all that stuff pre-order does take very long which also could lead to chargebacks too as well that's why a lot of people is kind of sketch about doing pre-order is because a lot of people are not willing to wait and if you get one delay then some people might charge back and the chargeback leads to your reserve funds your funds being held which is you know what i'm saying a bunch of stuff a lot of people don't just want to do so that's why a lot of people do pre-made but yeah if you guys don't y'all have had a capital again always do pre-made and yeah that's a great question because with my first drop i did pre-made pre-order for my first drop but back then when i had started pre-order was kind of just like coming out starting new so a lot of people it wasn't a bunch of clothing brand scamming so a lot of people was kind of more trustworthy to pre-order back then when i had when i was doing pre-order a lot so that's why i kind of it's kind of like died down a little bit pre-order has kind of died down a little bit because now clothing brands is scamming they saying two to three weeks and then it's really like you know what i'm saying with no updates so make sure you guys always on um, customer updates you know what i'm saying if you're doing pre-order better send be sending your customers like a week an email every single week and that's for that question so yeah if you guys get that let me know down below in the comments what you guys think if you guys rather do pre-made or pre-order me personally i'm sticking with the pre-made plus pre-order next question we got is how can i move the rest of my inventory from my previous drop so there's a bunch of ways i ain't it's probably just self-explanatory at that you can either do a restock which me personally i just like to do like little shock drops as well you could do a shock drop too it's really what, what a shock drop is it just basically just posting on your instagram posting on your sms be like hey we got these few pieces in and then that's what i like to do personally because once you build your sms list that's also a thing too if you guys haven't started building your sms list make sure you guys build your sms list because it may be times like these you may you may need to get a few little pieces off like that so an sms list is a great 
great way to do that because there's also there's some people that's sitting in your SMS list that's ready to buy your item. And once you just send that send that message saying, okay, it's a shock drop, boom, boom, this, and then they go and cop from that just from that SMS list, then boom, all your inventory is gone. But there's also a lot of other ways. What I would suggest you do is, which really is the fastest what I did, it's just if I like leftover pieces, just sell it to people in my school or some people in my state, feel me? So, and that's really just the easiest way to get by. Just be like, hey, I could just come drop it off or whatever. All that good stuff because once again, it's just on hand. You're giving it to them on hand. You could discount it as well. So there's really a bunch of ways you could get it and just find out whichever is easiest for you. If you could have it, some people in your state, shock drop, restock. I wouldn't suggest doing a full on restock like a full on like campaign restock if you're just gonna drop like at least like two, three pieces like, but if you guys, if you have that like, if you have like at least a few, I would definitely say do that re restock, do a shock drop, all that stuff. But literally, just literally just go around, post on your Instagram, your socials, if anybody around you needs it or anybody around you wants it, or just put it on your site, say free shipping and say next day shipping, all that good stuff. Cause it is next day shipping if you have it on here. But yeah, hopefully that answer your question. The next question we got is how did you get your first 100 sales, bro? I ain't gonna lie, that's a great question. I ain't really, I never really talked about it, honestly. And really my first 100 sales was, I think was up until August, 2022. And I think I got my first 100 was probably like, like March. And that was my first ever charcoal hoodie. So my first 100, bro, I ain't gonna lie, was like the most split around like probably took me like five months to get that and it was really my first job that I started to pop off but literally all I was doing I was literally designing pieces every day like I was just learning the most of my clothing brand like I was dropping so much on my brand I was probably dropping like one item every single week which is I learned was bad I learned bad early on because I'm like bro there's no way yeah I probably like oh how you dropping item every week I had a heat press it was bad quality just horrible so i was dropping everything i was dropping new pieces every single week like that was my thing each new week i had a new piece which was bad bro they were the quality sucks plus like no, i was getting no views no engagement and all that and literally the only thing i could tell you guys that really that i really did and was just posting every single day and trying to like and following like the trends but using them in my way if that makes sense so if i seen a video that had popped off with a whole nother clothing brand and i'm like bro this will be tough and this and this and this if i did that and that and that so i wasn't exactly copying them but i was literally take i was taking inspiration from the heavy trended videos and that was going crazy it literally was going crazy for me and i was just posting every single day Every single day, probably I was posting like twice a day. I wasn't posting four times, five times a day. Nah, I was posting every single day for like, for like, yeah, I was posting every single day for like twice. And then that's literally just how I accumulated my sales. I'm not gonna lie, like my first ever drop, I think that's the one I did. I did a hundred orders and probably one day that video is on youtube if you guys want to go watch that of my first job but that drop i literally was just posting every single day that was like my most my most my first viral drop was just all of my drops like all the lessons learned from all of my drops combined into one so by the time it was like i think i dropped that in march by the time it was from august all the way to march i had dropped so many clothes that i was like okay i already know what's gonna go bad i already know what's gonna go good and i kind of just already kind of planned out how I was going to market it because I was doing it for so long. I was just posting on TikTok every single day and the videos that went viral, I was literally trying to recreate them, but kind of do it in like a new way, feel me? And if there was a new trend, I was hopping on that new trend and just kind of making it into my way and doing that as well. And also one thing that was big when, when I was growing up too, when I was growing up was responding to your comments, bro. If you responded to a hate comment, that video was going viral, bro, I promise. Or it's getting like a good amount of views. So responding to hate comments and like asking those videos, what I had seen was going viral was um asking the people if it's if your product is worth $58. Literally, I was spamming those videos. I was doing like I was trying to do something different in each one. I was showing off the puff print, showing off everything. So it's basically just all that information that I kind of learned from one through ninety-nine up until that whole drop basically so that's how my 100 sales my first 100 sales went through i think up, up until like march i had i think i like 80 sales or like 70 sales and i was within like four months i think so i wasn't doing completely bad but bro i was doing i think i probably had like i think 3k in total sales at in total up until my first viral drop so that's how my first 100 sales went. I'm glad I was crazy because I think that first day of my viral drop, I got actually like, I think 60 sales that first day. And the next day I got like 100, but total that drop, I think I did like 100 
and 40 orders so that drop was going crazy that was kind of like my breakout drop was the great stmt hoodies those videos were going crazy but a lot of y'all probably will see it like oh he just got he just went viral out of nowhere blah, blah, blah. but bro y'all wasn't seeing me posting every single day before that ever since i started my brand like literally i was making it post every single day i'm actually like learning the algorithm i'm actually seeing what's trendy what's what people like what people don't like so all of that all goes into a part and i ain't gonna lie it's really luck too a luck is a big part of it as well when you market it and then you, if you guys watching this bro just know that luck is a big part but because a lot of people will tell y'all bro it's not lucky bro i ain't gonna lie tiktok algorithm is just straight luck but there is ways you can make yourself and put yourself into lucky situations though so posting every single day if you're not posting every single day then how are you gonna be how are you gonna get lucky if you're not posting every single day so that's just how i seen it if i wasn't like learning from stuff if i wasn't changing my ideas like if i wasn't seeing what was kind of trending and what was working for other people and kind of slapping my my version on it like if i was i was just doing that every single day and just seeing what stick then i was going with what stuck feel me and doing that i got in a position where i had got lucky my video i think i did like 200k views it went crazy bro i ain't gonna lie it was because it was i was showing the puff print the puff print was going crazy because i had noticed bro everybody's posting these puff print hoodies but the puff wasn't even crazy and those hoodies at the time that puff was i ain't glass probably like the puffiest puff print i've ever seen bro so i was just marking it off that and that's how my first 100 sales went i'm not gonna lie that was kind of kind of a crazy moment y'all could literally go see like that drop that first my my first ever gray hoodie drop i'll go see that because it's on youtube and everything so but so for the next question we got is how much do you pay to ship your merch so it really depends on how much it is like i could i could tell you guys straight up when my china manufacturer it's way more with china than pakistan so if you guys are ordering with a china manufacturer just know you guys are gonna pay more than if you're working with an instagram manufacturer so my pack my china manufacturer costs about if i was to get 30 hoodies right now and that would probably cost me about $500 to ship. That whole bulk, probably about like $500 to $400 just to ship. If I was to get like 30 hoodies. So you guys could go ahead. I'm not sure if it's going to be the same with y'all. But with my manufacturer, it costs at least like $500 to ship 30 30 pieces or like 50 pieces. I'm sure like around that range. But if I was to get more of like 100, 100 hoodies or like 100, and two, 100 to 200 hoodies, then it will go up to like eight hundred dollars so shipping is not cheap with these china manufacturers bro it is way cheaper than pakistan because pakistan could get you once again if you're doing pakistan because you're not on alibaba like it's way cheaper if you work with pakistan but then again pakistan has cheaper quality so it kind of evens out but pakistan shipping is way cheaper than china so don't go to china if you don't want good if you if don't go to china if you don't have the money for china but i will also say go to china because the quality is way better than pakistan so once again, Pakistan manufacturers are way cheaper in shipping in China. Ch China, bro, they will charge you 500, 800, bro. Don't, bro. I'm my experience, bro. China is way more. So, it just depends on how much how much it costs to ship. I'm not going to lie, it just depends on the quantity. Once again, like 30 to 50, like $500. I'm not going to lie. So, y'all could probably do the math. It's probably at least like $10 per hoodie. So either $8 or like $10 per hoodie that's like added on to the shipping. So let's say if I got my hoodies for $30, then it'll be like $40 just because the shipping adds on to the price and all that stuff. It obviously it gets lower the per unit gets the per unit gets lower once you order more bulk because that's just how the bulk discount that's how the bulk discounts work so if you order way more hoodies then the shipping will be lower per piece if that makes sense so y'all can go ahead and do the math and just whatever hoodies y'all cost so if you get like a 25 dollar hoodie just know you add in 25 dollar base plus five dollar shipping or like plus eight dollar shipping per piece so your 20 dollar manufacturer the 20 dollar hoodie your manufacturer is telling you is going to cost for 50 pieces the 20 dollars bro bro you might as well add like a 11 dollars on that bro so your hoodie is really costing 31 dollars for like 50 pieces if you order the bulk that's what like the shipping and all that added so when it comes to designs how do you come up with concepts so i'm gonna just basically just go over like my whole thought process behind the drop so what i like to do is i basically just like to find the general theme of the drop that i want to do so let's say like what i like and this also plays a part with your brand identity too as well if you have your brand identity is way easier to plan drops because you already know something to base it around of so if you guys know my clothing brand name is statement and it's basically just around expressing yourself expressing yourself and like to the max and just not caring about what nobody think giving your statement off and just 
expressing yourself to others within clothes feel me so based on off of that i like to do a bunch of drops that kind of evolve the same thing like i would not if my clothing brand name is statement i'm not going to be making clothes about war i'm not going to be making clothes about like hell i'm not going to be doing all that bro i'm not gonna lie so literally it just all goes around what your brand is about bro what your brand meaning is and mine is statement expressing yourself so what i like to do is i like to have different drops basically like showing off different ways to express yourself so let's say for one drop i would like oh that's all right and it all goes to like what i want to make and what season it is so let's say halloween is like next i probably might drop some acid wash um hoodies so it's really just anything i want to make so I, I could be like you know what next drop i want to make probably want to do like an art collection because an art you can express yourself art is in a way of expression so you could do art let's say i'm gonna do like okay i'm gonna do an art piece and it's getting hot so i will kind of want to do like an acid wash set i mean getting cold so i want to do an acid wash set you know people are gonna like that what colorways is trending right now what colorways are trending right now and i really just like piece all of that together into like one big one collection basically so i already got the theme that i kind of want to do and all i get to is now making a piece the actual piece and making the design for the piece and those just come randomly i'm not even gonna lie i could be scrolling on tiktok see some fire i'd be like wait now nah, if i put statement like this statement like that boom it'll be fire it just comes off randomly to me i'm not gonna lie like sometimes i do just sit there and just design and i and i be having those moments bro i don't know i don't know, if, I don't know about y'all but i just be having them random days where i just sit down and just design for like an hour or two hours and just honestly just cook up bro so i don't be forcing myself oh go home design go home i don't be forcing myself to do that i just whenever it just comes in my mind like all right i gotta get this collection done i'm gonna just always consciously think about what i could be adding what i, what I could be adding to my designs in an out day world so i could literally be at school see some inspo but i don't really be seeing nothing at school so i ain't lie there's nothing inspo about school but literally any app on my phone go to pinterest um pinterest is a good one too as well but i don't really be on pinterest because that's kind of overpopulated and a lot of people just be using pinterest designs but i'm not with all that but so it's just anything i see it like anything out throughout my day i could just be scrolling on tiktok see an instagram see another brand and i'm like okay that's fire what if i did this but this and that and that's literally just how I come up with my design products. I'm not even gonna lie. That's how I come up with my collections. And it's really fun doing it because how I see it is just like a big um school project. So you guys know I'm, I already see it like a, like it's like a school project film. You just creating pieces. I really just create what I want in kind of like the season. Feel me? So let's say like my next collection is gonna be a it's an art collection too as well. But it's I have a bunch of new pieces. I'm gonna show you guys that in the um, next video. In the next video, if you guys want to see, subscribe to that to see kind of like the behind the scenes of like my next drops and all that. Stay subscribed because that's gonna be in my next video. I'm gonna show y'all all that and basically just what I've been cooking up. But yeah, so yeah, my next collection is just gonna be like an art collection. And after that, I got some acid wash pieces. So it's just basically like whatever I want to make in a moment. That's whatever I make. So literally, that's how I kind of do it with my design process. Everybody's design process is different. Some people use a designer, and I'm not gonna lie, I try to use a designer, but I got scammed. So I'm I'm not going to no designer ever again that designer literally made me design my own stuff and that's crazy because i got scammed and my boy got scammed and that's i'm gonna put that in a whole different video for y'all too as well so y'all gotta stay tuned to this y'all got if y'all want to hear the story about how i got scammed next video but yeah so i really just got i really wasn't designing my pieces at first well not at first well i was at first but recently i haven't really been but i tried to find a new designer all that got scammed so i was like you know what i'm not doing it. i'm taking this as a sign i'm not doing it hopped on photoshop and i really just started designing getting started designing going crazy so yeah i'm back to designing myself and i'm not gonna lie i've been really liking it so i, I just really like i found out like i figured out like bro these designers like i couldn't really get like what i wanted made in my mind like i really couldn't tell it to somebody I just know I, I don't know I'm just bad at explaining something or something but yeah I started designing my piece in myself and so yeah that's just literally everybody's design process is different if you want to send it to somebody you can if you want to get a graphic designer to do that boom but yeah that's basically just my whole graphic design process on that it's pretty simple like when I only design whenever stuff comes to my head like I'm probably going to design later on today because I had this concept that I wanted to try out and sometimes concepts don't be working so i just try it if it don't work nine glide if, if i see it sucks i'm not gonna try it again i'm just gonna scrap it all that so also another thing is if you're watching this video and you close it man make sure you guys always plan your drops plan your drops because you guys don't want to be i already went through it bro you guys don't want to be sitting months without dropping nothing bro 
consistently drop you guys need to be planning it and that's something i had to learn too as well so make sure y'all planning y'all drop so the next question we got is when you get a bad sample does the manufacturer fix it or do you have to buy a new one so it really depends on the manufacturer but a lot of lot nine times out of ten the manufacturer will either refund you or they will redo it and basically like with all my manufacturers like if they ever messed up a sample i instantly tell them redo it redo it redo it so i never really had that problem before but nine times out of ten your manufacturer is going to redo it because if they mess up your sample even if they mess up your sample you could always go to alibaba and just do like file a claim to say that they didn't make the product to how you want it and just show screenshots and stuff like that i know a few people that actually got their refund off of that so if they mess up your sample and they not wanting to give you a refund you know what I'm saying? First of all, scrap that manufacturer because no manufacturer should be... That's scamming, bro. I'm not gonna lie. If they... If you know that they... If they sent you pictures and it's not exactly what you told them and I'm talking about like you told them to the measurements, you told them to the print style and they just sent you it straight, bro. I wouldn't work with them at all. I'm not even gonna lie, bro. Because what manufacturers are supposed to don't make sure like your manufacturer never sends it to you without confirming the final sample bro because that whole process is a long wait time bro i'm already knowing so literally if your manufacturer is not willing to fix it bro don't even work with them bro i'm not even gonna lie because my manufacturer i always if even if they mess up a sample i tell them like if they, they'll send me the pictures of the updates okay is this cool i'm like nah if they even if they mess up i'm be like nah it's not cool you know what i'm saying then you you know what i'm saying you can fix it from there on but that's why i tell you guys make sure you guys and get you guys tech packs like one on one bro i'm not gonna lie because don't just be giving your manufacturer like just random information bro make sure you guys say it to them bro like literally type it out explain it to them bro because at the end of the day they're not gonna be trying the best to like they're, they don't know what you're thinking bro and they're not gonna take the extra step to go hard for your piece because they have a bunch of other clothing brands in their warehouse bro so if you're not giving them exact measurement the exact printing styles and all that and you just expecting them to guess that then you already you cooking yourself i'm not even gonna lie bro because if you're giving them everything and they still mess up then it's gonna be a problem with the manufacturer but if you say if they messed up because you didn't get puff print and you didn't even tell them do puff print if you didn't explain to them do puff print bro then they not gonna refund you at all so just make sure you guys are explaining literally to the detail what you want to your manufacturer because they are not gonna they're not gonna go the extra step for you bro it's not their brand it is your brand so that's why i tell everybody if you're not gonna mess up your sample if you give them giving it give it to them directly even if they do mess it up, they will remake it, they will fix it, they will get it right in some sort of way. No manufacturer is just going to be like, nah, I messed up your sample, you you done. If they do do that, refund them on Alibaba. You could do that if you work with a manufacturer with trade insurance. So that's my, my take on it. I've never, I've personally never had a manufacturer say that they not going to fix it, not going to do it. Like literally, if even if they do um mess up on the sample, like let's say I had a, um like for one instance, I had the manufacturer, they used the wrong size chart and I think the color was off. So literally I told them before they sent the sample, I said, hey, I didn't tell you this color. I sent them a screenshot of what I told them. And then they're like, okay, sorry. They remade it, boom, got it shipped out, all that. So if you're telling them, if you tell them something and they do the opposite, then they're in the wrong. But if you don't tell them nothing and they don't do it, and you just like, oh, why didn't you do what I thought you would have done it? Bro, no, they're not gonna go to extra set for you. You gotta, that, that should be self-explanatory, but it know happened a couple times, so yeah. That's my take on it, all that good stuff. Hopefully that helps you out. For the next question we got is how to find the perfect manufacturer on Alibaba. One thing I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys, the perfect manufacturer is not really what you guys seem like. I had thought the perfect manufacturer was like best quality, best this, best that, but it's literally the perfect manufacturer for you. And what, what I mean is a perfect manufacturer for your budget, perfect manufacturer for the quality you want, and perfect manufacturer for the piece you make. So my perfect manufacturer might not be the perfect manufacturer for you. Just because it fits me, it doesn't mean it's going to fit you, feel me? So what I would tell you guys is the one easy way to find manufacturers and find them kind of like in a mass way is the in a one protected way is buying manufacturers from like clothing brands or getting manufacturers that you know works with clothing brands and etc. So that's literally like the, the easiest way to get a manufacturer. If you don't want to go searching, if you don't want to go trial and error, I will tell you guys the easiest way to get a manufacturer that you know works is buy it off a clothing brand. A clothing brand owner and that literally just go go to any clothing brand literally find a ig page most clothing brand owners will sell their manufacturer list or you can either just go to like a higher clothing brand owner and then just you know what i'm saying buy basically buy their manufacturer list and that's 
a 10 guaranteed manufacturer that you guys have so i do have a manufacturer list for you guys if you guys want my manufacturer list and i'm just going to be telling you guys that's literally the easiest way if you don't want to go trial and error or nothing because once again if you guys get my manufacturer list then you guys can literally go to the manufacturers that i've worked with and you guys know that 100 they're not a scam and 100 that they can make the quality that you want if the quality that i make is like worth it to you so if you guys see my clothes and you guys like, oh, I want that quality, I want that same puff print style, you guys can literally buy the buy my manufacturer if you guys want. And no, yes, it's not cheap, bro. It's not not nobody's gonna give you their manufacturer for free because once again, it's their manufacturer, and then you guys have to understand you're paying for your manufacturing because because you're paying basically to slow down my production because more people that work with the manufacturers is the slower my production is gonna get, and basically we all we all know how that's gonna go. So. Pay if you pay for a clothing man owner's manufacturer, basically. Well, if you pay for mine, and so you don't have to pay for mine, I really don't care if y'all don't pay for mine. I ain't gonna lie, world still gonna be evolving. Feel me, but yeah, whoever y'all choose, may as majority is gonna be a list. I sell a list of manufacturers, so if you don't like mine, if mine probably is like price is too high, you could go to a Pakistan manufacturer, you could go to another China manufacturer. So I have a whole uh 10 manufacturer list if you guys do want that, but. To find your main fashion on Alibaba, what I like to do is I like to do a quest for quotation. It's basically what an RFQ is on Alibaba. I'm going to try to put like a little screen recording up on here so I can show you guys how to get there. Basically, what a request for a quotation is, you literally go, it's like this website, it's like this site on Alibaba where you put all your information, all the tech pack, you put the puff print details, you put basically your hoodie, you're sending your tech pack out to a bunch of manufacturers. So, what it does is a lot of manufacturers could actually sort through and see your request and see, okay, I could do that. Let me hit them up. And a bunch of manufacturers are going to be contacting you. So, you don't have to do no work. You could literally, all the manufacturers that are that can make your product this to how you see it because you're basically just sending out your whole resume you're sending out your whole um your whole product to a bunch of manufacturers and whoever could whoever knows how to make it and whoever has good quality will literally come to you then then once you get those manufacturers you ask them for the previous products that they made don't go off the products they show you off of like the like off the main screen make sure you guys actually actually text them send me products you have made before in videos and messages and make sure that they are not taking just these random clothes from the internet bro because a lot of clothing brands bro i've seen seen i know y'all have seen a bunch of clothing brands on alibaba but it's not really their manufacturer my manufacturer for my stmt hoodies was on alibaba and my pakistan manufacturer don't even have alibaba how does that make sense so these china manufacturers is using my pictures my puff print hoodie pictures to basically get more people to click on a product and like sell it to them but they won't do that in the dms well some i know that for some clothing brand manufacturers they won't do that in the DM. So make sure when you, you could call them, either call them up, make sure you get what they have made recently because that's literally have seen, that's how I've seen manufacturers be make or break. I would literally ask them, like I will, so like let's say it's like a Hellstar hoodie on a on a um, front photo. I'll click it, chat with the manufacturer. Y'all already know what I'm talking about. They're having a bunch of random hoodies. Hellstar hoodie, click it, boom. Chat with the manufacturer and I'll be like, send me stuff you have worked before and send me stuff that you have actually made and they will send me a bunch of rant a bunch of videos of brands that they have actually made and you can see it's kind of it's theirs because you can obviously see through like the background and stuff the background is the same the quality kind of looks the same so they're actually sending me their whole like the stuff that they have actually made before not just some hellstar hoodie we all know they didn't make feel me so that's literally how how i can tell clothing brands from like make or break or not when i did that with my sweatpants manufacturer because i literally asked them hey have you made this before can you show me something that you have made similar to this and then he sent me i'm like okay that's hard so i know he can make it boom now i have a sweatpants manufacturer that can make great quality hoodies and great quality sweatpants because i've seen literally what they've made before and 
all that good stuff so yeah that's basically like how the easiest way to wear um i suggest you guys do the rfq it's, it's just a section on alibaba basically just a bunch of manufacturers come to you and not all of them are going to be good so you guys have to just go and text them but it just cuts down on the time where you have to go and text each single manufacturer because the manufacturers come to you you don't have to go to the manufacturers basically that's a good thing make sure they have trade assurance too as well there's like two options i'm not sure the other option but there's two options of assurance you guys make sure that you're they're 100 percent authentic not authentic but make sure they're actually like a real main fresher on alibaba y'all know the two little sections i'm talking about i'm gonna put it up it's like trade assurance and like guarantee something so yeah, that's how you that's how i found my manufacturers i'm being 100 percent honest. that's literally how i found my main how i found my manufacturers just go ahead and ask them all that but if you don't want to do if you don't want to go trial and error do all that just hit up someone for the clothing brand list and all that good stuff so yeah i've also made a, a in-depth video of it in the past so if you guys want to go ahead and go watch that video i made like i think a 30 minute video on how to find your manufacturer so literally just free sauce on y'all free sauce for that so for the next question we got is how do you market your drops so there's a bunch of ways you could go within marketing your drops but i'm just be talking about how i personally market so what i do is i always post on instagram and tiktok and i also do run ads too as well so whenever i'm doing a drop and whenever i have the collection ready whenever i'm trying to market boom i kind of like set around this date that i kind of want to have everything like dropped for so let's say like it's september 25th right now and then i would kind of say okay i want to drop by or october 15th and then that's when i would kind of set around my drop date feel me so first thing i do is always get my drop date i always like to do it at least like two to three weeks of posting before actually dropping you guys don't have to do a specific time before dropping but i really don't suggest you guys like market for like a whole two months because at the end of the day nobody's gonna really care about your product at the end, like after two months bro nobody's gonna can't wait that long just for y'all product so once again i always like to do at least like two to three weeks of marketing and then that's when i really kind of look at the analytics and see if it's time to drop a lot i seen another person ask me what's a this is also another question is what's another um what's a good time like how do you know whenever you're gonna your drop is gonna do good and you really don't know other than kind of your your the likes you're getting and really um how much memories you're getting on your sms list so once again how i like to do the drop is i like to post every single day on instagram and tiktok just basically just making the content according to my target audience and i kind of already really not mastered it but i already know like a good way to um like a good way of my way how to market so boom i'm posting on tiktok every single day for two to three weeks and then i'm also having a call to action on every single one of those videos and what is a call to action basically you know those things that you see brands doing say oh join sms's for 10 percent off join sms's for early or for one hour early access that is called a call to action and that basically drives all that engagement you're getting from instagram tiktok your ads all that to your sms list so your sms list is kind of like this one hub with all your customers are going and it is it is the best because it's messaging it's literally right on your phone feel me and you know what i'm saying everybody checks their messages so that's why i love doing sms you know what i'm saying sms is the crucial part email s email is like the weakest i ain't gonna lie don't do email i like to get at least like at least like a thousand to two thousand new sms members then that's when i will go ahead and go drop if y'all wondering like how i do the drops is every single time i drop i at least do a one hour early access for my sms members and you guys basically just want to be giving you guys we want to be giving them these incentives to when you're when you're actually posting content so it's either an hour early access 10 percent off or you can either get both feel me but what i like to do is i like to give 10 percent off plus an hour early access and what that basically does is gives your sms members like it gives them a reason and incentives to actually join your sms list and actually buy the product so when let's say if it's um pre-made if it's a pre-made drop i'm giving them one hour early access to actually secure the item so that will make them want to join the list more just because they want to actually secure it so make sure you guys are actually giving them incentives because nobody's just going to join your sms list just because they want the product make sure you guys have them incentives make them want to buy the whole product more as a whole and that's how you see a bunch of these brands getting 40k 50k drop days is because of the sms list boom once you drop you open the early access and get all those sms members to buy and then once they buy you get the once like an hour later or or it just depends however you do your early access once you do that you know what i'm saying you do a send out another text saying okay now the shop is open for everybody and that is how people get a 50k 100k 30k drop days is all off of sms so i get around like that good number of that's when i really just plan i'm going to drop and if i really don't see like a lot of traction or a lot of people like signing up to my sms list then i then i would push the drop back far further because 
then again, I wouldn't want to drop if nobody is like showing interest to it and I'm really just not really getting that video to pop off or like the, or I don't have like the right amount of subscribers that's on my list. But so yeah, if you guys don't have to, if you guys aren't seeing no traction to your videos and literally don't see like nothing, you don't have to drop it. You don't have to force yourself to drop. Literally just take your time with it, bro. I, I'm glad I will max it out probably at like a month, bro. But yeah. I would just I'd be marketing around like two to three weeks SMS call to action just like I explained. Make sure you guys are doing emails. I know I just said that, bro, but no, bro. Emails is like make sure you guys are focusing on SMS. Emails are good to collect, but don't just do emails. Make sure you guys are collecting SMS as well. Feel me? So that's basically just how I market all of my drops. What I'm really starting to do is like trying to have like more photo shoots as well and. Basically, like the content that I, I like, I like to post is kind of like just photo shoot content and really just like get creative, like behind it, feel me, and just like do like um clothing brand campaigns, feel me. So, you know what I'm saying? You there's a bunch of ways you guys can market. You could go like the campaign route where you do a whole photo shoot and all that, taking pictures, or you could just post pictures on the floor, which I don't recommend. Y'all just post pictures on the floor. Anytime you like y'all dropping or doing a market, like a whole campaign, make sure you guys are posting on body pics whether it's a photo shoot micro influencers all that stuff feel me so because that content is also is good as well and will actually help your brand get out there so that's kind of just how i market my job feel me hope that I answer your question i really just like make whatever and then drop it within like two to three weeks i'm a, um i market it market for like two to three weeks all the call to action you know what i'm saying make sure i'm literally like the whole time i'm looking at my sms list I'm trying to max out my SMS list perfectly. Incentives to join the SMS list is key too as well. So you guys are always wondering, how do you guys get that 40K months? Like how do you get 10K in one day? How do you get 5K in one day? All off of SMS list, feel me? Cause everybody like, you literally get the text straight from your phone. So SMS list is a key thing cause nobody's checking your emails. They is checking your phone. And you, everybody knows that cause you personally, I ain't gonna lie, I don't be checking my, I don't check like, bro. I'm not checking for an email for my for a clothing brand, but yeah, that's that question. How you market your drops? All that good stuff. I do run TikTok. I do post on TikTok and on Instagram, bro. I'm glad Instagram is kind of like I kind of post more for the campaign ish. Feel me? And TikTok is really just like outfit of the days and just basically like more of like th that content to reach that sort of type of niche that I have on TikTok. So everybody knows the difference between Instagram. Instagram is more kind of like a gallery. Feel me? Kind of all that stuff and i do run ads too as well i try to run ads like a little little bit amount because i'm not trying to like dip into the profit that i would make off of the book feel me so i try to do like ads like probably like the last three days that's all i do and then i see if like the ads is working and all that stuff so it really just depends on what the drop is looking like so tiktok facebook ads and i do run ads too as well after like while like if i'm doing like a pre-order then i'm definitely gonna be running ads during the pre-order because for you brands that are like established and you guys have capital, make sure you guys are utilizing Facebook ads, bro. Facebook ads is like, bro, you guys need to be on ads. You guys need to like actually sit there and like sit down, sit down and learn how to run ads for me, like how to make your own campaigns and that. If you guys want a video on that, let me know if you guys um want to. I did um I'll be helping out my um mentees and all that. So if you guys are want if you guys want to work one on one with me, click the link down below, feel me. But yeah. I do be cooking up on ads, bro. Like ads is like a big reason, big part. You guys probably look at my Instagram account or my uh, um takes. I'd be like, bro, why don't you post? Why don't you post, bro? I don't be like spamming reels and all that because I be just focusing on ads for me and really just focusing on all of them is crucial. So ads, ads, and ads, and yeah, ads will really take your brand to the next level if you guys have that capital. But yeah. That's for that question. The next question that we got is, should I run ads? And if so, Instagram ads or Facebook ads? So one, make sure when you guys are running ads, it is most likely it is easier to run ads when you already have a running, winning product and you already have like winning content. Basically, if you already have videos that are getting are, that are going viral organically, it is it's gonna be like no risk at all if you're gonna be putting those organic working videos into paid ads. What ads is doing is literally just pushing your content out there to more people. So if you already have a video that's working or you have a video that has like a lot of views and you run ads on it, you're pushing that working video that 
perfect video that already got the views and all that you're pushing that out to way more people using ads so it's way easier if you already have like a winning campaign that you know if you guys have like fit picks that work well organically anything that works well organically will nine times out of ten work well with ads just because it, like if it works organically if it could organically like has someone's attention imagine if you pay in to see it so you're basically once you know your target audience and once you know like if you have those winning products and you have that winning campaign then i would say nine times out of ten bro you should definitely start running ads bro you could definitely start running ads without it but i would say like it's easier to know if an ad is going to win or not if it's if the content is already working organically i literally anytime i know like any ad that i do that does good organically always does good when i'm doing ads because i'm just pushing it out to more people so more people can see it so that same organic content is just going to see reach more and more and more eyes and that's where the ads come in place once you know your target audience and you know who's seeing that video and who's buying your clothes off of that video that's when you could directly target those ads to that person so for example Let's say you you could run an ad, do 18. Let's say you know like 18 year olds up until like 25 buy your clothes and you only know like male buy your clothes. So then you would just do an ad 18 to 25 and then just target straight male. So then literally one, everybody who sees it, it won't get targeted to no females. It wouldn't get targeted to nobody that's older because it's your specific target audience. So it's basically pushing your organic video out to tens of thousands more people. And I'm not gonna lie bro, ads literally help my brand go crazy bro. And literally like help the last month like ads is going crazy i ain't gonna lie like three times ros if you have the capital to run ads definitely already run ads if you're if it's working good organically well then you should have like no problem with it and all that good stuff if you guys want to want to have a video about how to run ads you know what i'm saying two questions already about it if you guys want a video on how to run ads let me know down below in the comments but yeah definitely go ahead and run ads if you want to take that next step that's that's me personally ads brought me ads took me from like ads took me from like um like probably like 10k sales to my first 50k month i'm not gonna lie and my first 50k month to my 80k month so ads is a big part tiktok ads instagram boost i would suggest you i suggest you do facebook meta ads that's like way better than instagram boost because boost is only really good for giveaways and stuff and engagement so run meta ads because you can actually see like how many sales you're getting per purchase and all that stuff you could basically just see everything you can see all the analytics with ig boost you can't see no analytics at all other than like profile visits bro so i really only run ig boost when it's a giveaway post or i need like to get likes on a post but if you're running conversions make sure you guys are using meta ads because you can actually target you know what i'm saying that specific people and it just works overall better than Boost because you can actually see what your money is being spent on. Because with Boost, you can't see none of that. Can't really can't see none of that. So, EW, go ahead and run ads. Let me know what y'all think about that. Next question we got is, can you do a brand review vid in the next month or two? Let's go. All right, so if y'all want me to do a brand review video, go ahead, go follow my Instagram and comment down below in the comments if you guys want me to do a brand review video. Literally, if you're watching right now and you want to be featured in the video, go ahead, go comment, do a brand review video know what i'm saying this month or whatever just go comment brand review video and i will literally give you a brand review video like next week or something so you guys want to go see that uh you guys gotta follow my ig too as well because i might just post randomly whenever i'm gonna um be there so anytime i post my brand review video if, you, if you're a clothing man and if you're a clothing man owner watching this and you want to be in that video follow my ig so whenever i post that story you could go ahead and type your brand in because those videos always get like over 50 plus brands and those videos always get so much views. So if you guys really want free promo and be rating our brands and all of that. So if you guys want to go ahead, go follow my IG. And whenever I post that story, y'all going to see that. So y'all definitely going to get that video soon. Fortunately, that is going to be the end of today's video. If you guys do have any more questions, let me know down below in the comments. And let me know if you guys have any more videos you guys want me to record. I literally did this video because y'all over here, y'all requested it in the comments. So any video y'all want, go ahead and request it in the comments. But yeah, we back on YouTube. Be, being consistent with it, I know y'all two days in a row. We got another day in the life video coming soon as well. I might go ahead and go record that too as well. But if you're new, make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe. We is on a road to 20k subscribers. We is currently at 19, 18,900. Can they focus? 18,900. You know what I'm saying? By the time we watching this, but go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. 20k on the way. You know what I'm saying? Dreams coming true and all that. But yeah, like button, subscribe. And I'll catch y'all in the next one, yo. Yeah, we really want to hit 20k though. Like nah, this crazy. I remember when I was. Look at this, bro. We're gonna go to Lifetime. 
real quick, everybody that's watching still. 2018, I had 100 subs. I, I was doing YouTube for like what? Three years and gained 100 subs, bro. Always chase your dreams, bro. And now we're just being consistent with it. Like, button, subscribe. Catch y'all next one.